Welcome back everyone to Data Science for Everyone. Today we're going to be talking about linear regression with PySpark. Let's get started. So the first thing that we want to do is start out with a Spark session. So from PySpark.sql import Spark session. Uh, we want to run that and then we're going to start a Spark session uh, with the builder. And let's give it an app name of Lenreg. And then we want to get or create. Now from there, we need to make sure and grab some of our data. So uh, let's call this uh, DF for data frame. And we do spark dot uh, read dot CSV. And then today we're going to be looking at the e-commerce customers dot CSV. And again, here we want to infer the schema to be true. We want our header to also be tr true. Now let's take a look at our schema really quickly to make sure everything's going well. So emails are strings, uh, addresses strings, avatars a string, the average test in length is going to be a double, uh, the time on the app is a double, uh, time on the website's a double, and length of membership's a double, and then a uh, year amount spent is also a double. Let's also um, maybe look at the head of the data. Okay, uh, and here we see that we have again emails are in some of email form. Our addresses again are in some sort of text. Avatar is some sort of text. So again, this must be just a color scheme. Uh, and then again, we have time, which looks like, again, it's in minutes. Same thing on the app. Okay. Um, and again, time on the website. And then length of their membership. And again, the yearly amount spent. So the first thing that we need to do when we are setting up our machine learning algorithms, okay, particularly when we are using PySpark, is to get things in the proper setup, okay, or in the proper uh, format. So our basic setup, again, we've talked about this when we did uh, talked about data transformations, but we need to make sure that we grab PySpark, uh, PySpark, uh, dot ml, dot, and then now we have a couple things. We want the linear algebra, and we want to import vectors, okay? And then from PySpark ml dot feature, we want to import our vector assembler. Now we could always do things with a couple of these maybe string values, but again, right now we're going to probably ignore those. Um, and so from here we need to actually create our assembler, our assembler, and so we want uh, to create a vector assembler. And then from here we want our input columns, uh, and so we want, uh, and you know what, let me this will make this a little bit easier if I do df.columns here, and I can actually grab them from here. So we want the average session length. Oh, uh, let's have the time on the app. Uh, let's also maybe have time on the website, and uh, maybe length of membership as well. Let's grab both of those. Okay, and I want to clean this up just a little bit. Uh, then the next thing that we're going to want is our output column. And this, again, we will want this to be called features. So the next thing we want to do is create um, our output. So and this is going to be an assembler.transform. And then we want this on our data frame. Then we also check our output, and let's make sure we want to select, and let's look at the features, um, and dot show. So now you see here that we have these uh, this vectorized format of our features. Uh, we can also take a look then, since our, um, our variable of interest is going to be our year amount spent. So let's also grab that really quickly and take a look. Um, yearly amount spent whoops uh, and this is actually going to be on 
our output correct. Oh, whoops, here, this is the problem. There we go. So now we see here, we have our variable of interest here is the yearly amount spent, and then we have our feature vectors in here. So we'll also want to create this as our full data set that we're going to be running because again, we only want these two uh, features. So let's actually go on and do that and call this uh, um, final df. Uh, and you know what, we don't want to do the show anyways, um, to help clean up a little bit of space. So now let's also, we need to turn this into our uh, train data and our test data. And here we want our final data frame, well, our final data frame here uh, to be a random split here. And we're going to do um, a 70-30 split as we normally do. And so then we can take a look at our uh, training data uh, here. Uh, and you know what, I probably should uh, look and again, it, lo it looks fine. So, but let's also look at the descriptive statistics of this. And we'll also wanna compare this a little bit to our test set to make sure that there's not too much of a difference here. Um, and again, it, it shouldn't be a problem, but again, sometimes uh, when we are running um, data and it has maybe a specific segments to it. Okay. We need to do different types of splits. Okay. Instead of just a random split, maybe you need segmentation type splits or whatnot, but we won't worry about that for now. There's a little bit of difference as, as we see here, but it's not enough for us to cause any alarm. Uh, so let's go on with the linear regression. So we need to make sure and import that. And so from PySpark dot and then uh we want ml dot regression import linear regression and so then let's go on and model this uh well we need to instantiate the model so lm is going to be our linear regression model um and our label that we want on here our label column is going to be our yearly amount spent. We can run that and then let's actually create our model. So we're going to fit this on our training data. And then we need to uh, grab and look at our intercepts. So I'm actually going to import pandas as PD here. Um, and we're going to do this in a little bit cleaner manner than what their output looks like. So let's do something like um, pd.dataframe and uh, let's create uh, something like coefficients. And then we want our data itself. Okay, so then that would be here, if we want our coefficients, it would be model.coefficients. Uh, and then I'm also going to set up the index here and we're going to grab this piece right here. And again, you could have saved this in a separate um, uh, object if you want to, to make things a little bit cleaner for you. Um, and you know what, we can actually set that up right now. Let's call this variable uh, coefficient var, and I will say uh, coefficient var here is gonna be that. And all of that, again, you can see still works. So then we can come down here and do, this is coefficient var. And when we run this, now we actually have a nice little uh, matrix here saying that if there's a one unit increase in our average session length, so for example, a one, one minute increase, then there's going to be a 25, um, let's say, I believe that this is probably our amount a year is gonna be dollars, so every, minute added to our session length is gonna increase $25 of our yearly income. So then the same thing here, uh, the time on the app, any minute that they've added on there, or maybe it's an hour, um, adds $38. Time on the website only adds 33 cents. And then the length of their membership for every increase that we have in there would increase um, that as well. So let's go on and 
also look at our residuals. Um, so let's call our res uh, results here, and we want our model dot evaluate, and we're going to uh, do that on our test data, and we can look at res dot residuals dot show, and we can look at those as well. And I would suggest uh, plotting these out as well in a histogram to kind of see um, what's going on with them. But we're not going to take the time to really do that today because I want to go on and look at some of the other variables or the other variables, the other evaluation metrics. So let's create some unlabeled data here. And this is our test data. And again, we want to select out uh, the features of our test data. Because again, uh, again, we have this test data, so we know that these are correct answers. So we just want to check the accuracy of the model. So we'll create uh, predictions. And we want to do our model.transform. And we want on the unlabeled data. Then we can look at our predictions here. Dot show. And again, here we would want to uh, plot these out potentially, uh, comparing each of them to the results to see how they are. Um, but let's go on and do... Um, our evaluation statistics here to see about our results. So let's do print, uh, mean absolute error, and then we want our model uh, dot, or sorry, our res dot mean absolute error, and then we'll do print. We want our uh, mean squared error here, res mean squared error. Let's also take a look at the RMSC, root mean squared error, here, res dot, um, what do we want here, uh, uh, root mean squared error. We also want to print out our r squared values, and then we'll also go through and print out our adjusted r squared. And let's take, oops, our adjusted R squared. So we see here that actually our results are pretty good. Um, here we're looking at about a 98% accuracy. Um, again, there's a plus or minus this uh, $9, give or take on uh, some of our, for our residuals, uh, our, our, um, our mean squared error here, which isn't too bad for our error rate either. So overall, I think this is a pretty darn good um, model for at least with the data that we have. Um, again, if you guys like this, please comment, subscribe, and uh, I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.